This laser won't do what I'm going to show you by far. So she had one treatment, 15 minute treatment. <clears throat> and three months later, she had another 15 minute treatment. Okay. I know those hands are hard to see up there, I think. Hard for me anyway, maybe not for you. But here we have a before and after in the same here is the before, the crooked finger, if you will, with eaten up with arthritic degeneration and imbalance. And this is the before, okay, on the side. And this is the after over here. Uh, admittedly, it's difficult to two dimensions to show a three dimensional object, but I think even most of you can see a significant improvement. For my part, I was trained as a hand surgeon, and that, what you're looking at there, would take a lot of operating, a lot of follow-up, risk of infection, ta-da, 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 ta-da. It was done with two 15-minute treatments. We might be onto something here. And since uh, I've spoken here last time, we've done some more research, a further research study. And this particular device here is a bit of an evolution of what I've shown you before, except, whoop, oh, good. Here has two little LEDs which tell you which circuit is running, and one of them is red, but I'll tell you about that one in a moment. And one is green. You can see it over here. And the green will give you results like I've shown you just today. The red one is quite remarkable in that it has to do with the aging process. And many of you have heard of uh, telomeres and the length of chromosomes that they get shorter as we get older until after a while they quit getting shorter and we die. Okay. Well, that's what we're working with, that idea. And telomeres are the ends here that you see on these chromosomes, caps, if you will. And so that as we get older, they get shorter, but we found an electronic way to make them longer so that instead of getting older physiologically, start getting younger. And some of the entertainments of age, if you will. Gee, I came into this room, I wonder what I came in here for. I should have made a list when I went to the grocery store. And, you know, that kind of entertainment gets old. Anyway. It addresses those kind or I, I used to be able to do that, but I can't do it anymore. You know, I'm too old. So those kinds of ideas is what we're discussing here. Again, this is just a, a different diagrammatic way of looking at the telomeres. These are in uh, white blood cells. They're met, this, the research that I'm showing you here was done by SpectraCell, a standard lab that does this kind of work in the U.S. It's done in the U.S. They did the measurements. We drew the blood. And then they reported it. And this, um, again, this is a local person in Orlando. She's a massage therapist. And if we could take just a moment to look at this graph, the black line you see here, that's average. That's average for everybody this age. Okay, she's she is actually 58 years old. Okay, but her telomeres show her as 68. She was in the 18th percentile. She was a sick person. She was still working as a massage therapist, but she was a sick person. And then 
here we have 10 months later, 10 months, she's gone to the 37th percentile. Still see the black line, but notice that here's her score. She's moved above the line now. And were you to draw a perpendicular from her score this way, drop a perpendicular, that would be her age. And the other perpendicular would cross the line here so that physiologically she was 46. Tremendous improvement. Now, what we saw here didn't happen for everyone. Some of the people weren't this sick. This work, the sicker they are, the better their improvement can be. And hers, and she, uh, I spoke to her just a few days ago, and she said, gee, if you got any more research, tell me about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's very pleased with her improvement. This is, well, I don't know. She's 46. You answer the question. <laughs> okay. She's not had a facelift or any of that silicone foolishness or Botox stuff either. Okay. This was the transducer with, that was used in that research. We have about 20 in the research. I reported to you, but it's not quite all in yet. Um, the people don't seem to want to return this. They want to keep it. <laughs> so we're not quite done with gathering the numbers. But we have seen some encouraging results. Then I'd like to show you a little bit more. This is another lady. And this may be difficult to see. It might not. But you see the arrow over here, somewhere near that green light. I know the green light's really bright. And there are some circles over here. Over there and over there. I'll turn the light off. Can, can you see them from the back? What that is, is that uh, this lady had breast cancer. And it spread. It was a stage four. That means it spread to her pelvis. This is a pelvis here, this x-ray. And um, tremendous pain. She's a very stoic person. And uh, she didn't come to this conference last year because of this pain. Let me go a little further. You'll notice here, here's our arrow again. Same person, same view. And see all this white fuzziness in here? That used to be circles, open circles. That's new healing that occurred. Two machines were used, I'll show you in just a moment, such that their beams crossed at the problem area and converted that part of the body has ligaments that cross this area. Like knee ligaments, you've heard people talk about, well, we have them in the pelvis too, that cross that area. And those ligaments were, were converted to a bony matrix, a bony grid, if you will, such that she was able to walk on her own again. And it's now roughly been a year since this was discovered. And uh, you might like to meet, would you like to meet her? Carolyn, could you? Stand up a little bit. This is a lady in the picture. And she'd be happy to answer any questions you might have at the booth. But let me show you a little bit more. She also had a problem in her humerus, in her upper arm bone here. That's the shoulder. This elbow would be down here. And here you see, this is the cortex, the outer layer of the bone. But see these thin areas? Get the light out of the way. 
it's almost broken through. In fact, the orthopedic surgeon, he wanted to put rods down there. As soon as he saw that, he says, oh, we need to put rods in there, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Well, I've got a little more experience than he does, and I fired him. <laughs> it's exactly what I did. He said, don't ever come in our room again. He didn't even examine her. Oops, I'm sorry, but that's what happened. So, here we are. Oops, let's go back just one. Notice the date. Here's the date. July last year. We were here. Well, here in town anyway. And now, here we are and it's January this year. And we're looking the same arm, same bone. Notice how thick this has started to get. Now, it's not all. It's probably healed totally now, but this was roughly six months ago. You can see how it's starting to get thick again and white. It's healing. Okay. No rods. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> Wondered how this was done. Well, we had one of these laser machines. How far away did we put it? Half a meter, that's right, good. Go to the front of the class, half a meter. And we, uh, I don't have it here, but we put a, a, a little bottle of, uh, of uh, medicine in front of the laser so that the laser could take the vibrations from the bottle to the problem site. Okay. We use xylocaine as one of them. That's a numbing medicine the dentist uses, you know, before they do stitches or anything. And then, same, similar machine, not the same machine, but a similar machine, and we put glucose in front of the other one. So it was right in here. And then we turned both of them on at the same time in a 12-hour treatment. And you saw the results already. We're going to talk about a couple of other things that sometimes sort of fade as we get older, and that's vision. Just a couple of minutes about eye anatomy. Here's the lens. People get cataracts, take the lens out. But there's two other problems they get. One is that the screen gets wrinkled back here. And they can't see anymore. It's not flat. It's wrinkled. And called macular degeneration, or this is a fluid-filled item. The pressure goes too high, and they lose their vision that way. The glaucoma, high pressure, and macular degeneration, the most common causes to lose vision. This lady had macular degeneration. Uh, I said had. Uh, we found with the machines in many instances a single treatment and they'll gain a line on the eye chart. Two weeks later, we measure them, excuse me, we measure them again and they still got what they gained and they gain another one. Well, after you gain three or four lines, you don't have macular degeneration anymore. And we have examples of 15 year follow-ups with people with macular degeneration. Now, there are other causes also, but um, that's the most common, and that's how, what the results have been. And now, we're going to take just a moment to look at, at the high-pressure ones. Again, same, I hasn't changed a bit, but we're going to talk about the high-pressure, or the glaucoma problem. Oh, how did he sneak in there? Well, he's a Canadian. That's how he snuck in there. He's a Canadian dog. Okay. But his pressures were 99. I have never seen anybody with a pressure anywhere close to that. Here's normals over here, something in the neighborhood of 9 to 23. They usually start, you know, with the drops and on and on they go. But we had a user, dog lover, needless to say, up in Canada, that had a machine and she treated him for a couple of weeks 
they wanted to remove the eye that had the real high pressure problem. And it was supervised by this veterinarian. We have many veterinarians that use our equipment. They fix all kinds of things. Um, and it came back to normal within two weeks. So that's an example of eye problems. And this one, this one's a little, this is very different. This uh, gentleman, he's 75 years old. He's had both knees replaced about eight years ago. But now he had a bad hip. Well, a lady in his household, his wife, um, was unfortunate and she developed that, that memory problem you know, that so many are, are getting. And trying to help her, we loaned her one of our anti-aging units. And so for six months before the operation, their household, they treated it with the anti-aging. Well, then the hip became a problem that he couldn't live with, so he decided to have it replaced. We went to see him the day after the surgery. He was gone. He left the hospital. He went home. Well, he didn't go home. He went to rehab. And his physical therapist said, this man is in the 99.9 .9 percentile of all the hip replacements I've ever seen. You almost have to be better than yourself to get the 99.99. You know, really, you have to. You got to. But anyway, that's what he said. And it's up walking around and just fabulous recovery. We've seen it in other people too, but that's what happened. And he's not, I mean, take a look, he's not an athlete. I mean, with a hanging off him and, you know, you know. <laughs> he's, man, he's not an athlete in the, any sense of the word. But he is so happy that he was up and walking the day after surgery. Did 2,400 steps the day of surgery. The afternoon, done in the morning, in the afternoon, did 2,400 steps. The next day, he discharged him. So those are some of the possibilities. I have one final thing that I'd like to mention. Many of you are well aware of this. You're well aware of Tom Bearden's work. Uh, what a stellar gentleman we have that we could... read his books and try to understand. Anyway, he wrote this in 85, this book. And it told of the uh, Russian uh, efforts to develop scalar energy. If you think back over a period of time, um, You'll recall we had a nuclear submarine at one point in time called the Thrasher. And it suddenly disappeared off the coast of North Carolina, somewhere near Helton Head or Mag's Head. Well, they found the, the debris eventually, and it had been destroyed underwater. Well, let me take a moment to mention a little bit more about Tom, as you, probably most of you know this too. But you'll recall that Tom worked with President Reagan on the Star Wars concept. And a little known thing, which is explained in his book here, is that they, uh, they shot scalar energy at us, but Tom was ahead of the game. He had a reflector. He reflected it directly back. Oh, I'm not quite done yet. He reflected directly back the way it came. It went back to the transmitter. It went back to the power supply and took out Chernobyl. 
Now that shook them up a whole lot because they knew if he could do it, it was coming back at them. And some of these airplanes that have disappeared, wonder where they went, guys. They're able to shoot around the, around the equator and over the top, and where the two come together, it vaporizes it. You say, well, so what? You know, it didn't get me. I can still work. Yeah, but think a minute. I don't know where you live, but I live in Orlando, and in about the last five years, we've seen a big upswing in road rage. Maybe you have too. Maybe you live in a little town you didn't see it, but we have. And one of the possibilities is that well, it's in the book too, I didn't, it's not my research or anything. But with scalar energy, of which we have no sensors to, to notice, they're able to separate the body, the body from the mind and to convey things, ideas to us that we're not aware of. Now this little guy here, stick it in your microwave and call it, it will ring. It's a scalar energy device. So those are some of the thoughts. Um, oh, yes. Perhaps this past winter you've noticed this unusual weather. I should add, it's in the book also, 1976, they did a research on a, in Canada with these devices, these scalar energy devices, to find out if they could control the weather. It's a yes. It's a yes to that. And what's going on, and just recently, in the last two weeks, I was watching a, a oops, a um, alien, an alien show, and right at the end, the last minute and a half, they talked about, you know, there may be some weapons out there that we can't, we can't perceive, and that we're being attacked by those weapons. And for the television to say that is run by the people in D.C., it's probably very true so much and they don't know a thing to do about it because Western science has denied that this even exists. Well, it's not all bad because, okay, it's fine. We found that these devices that back off the aging, the changes of aging, also protect their scalar devices. And when the attack throws your system off of the eight hertz, machines bring it back. So that's not hopeless. It's a pot. It's something that you can do yourself to save yourself from these, this attack. Have any questions? Good. Uh, uh. Get a mic. Find a microphone. you said in your talk today I would say are very true um, speak up Can you? a lot of the things you said today in your talk are absolutely true oh, really? um, okay. I have an electrodynamics lab and I validated and I mess with scalar waves on a daily basis um, say that again please I have an electrodynamics lab okay. I mess with scalar waves on a daily basis oh good okay, okay? Mm -hmm. so 
The first question I have is, do you have any scope shots of your circuits that can show a scalar wave representation on an oscilloscope? No, because... Would you like to see mine? Sure, sometime. Uh, we do have an answer to your question, though, I think. Conrad, are you here? Oh, okay. Mr. Dove is a, our electrical engineer. We work very closely together. In fact, we, we were discussing this just, I think, yesterday or the day before. Uh, go ahead, Conrad, and tell him what, what your thoughts are. Showing it on oscilloscope. It's going to be a conversation. It's not an electromagnetic so thing, you see. Okay, here. Oscilloscope shot with electromagnetic. The answer to that is no. We don't have a sensor that will allow us to do that. Uh, please make sure you hold the mic next to your mouth. Thank you. The answer is still no. <laughs> <laughs> My response was, would you like to see mine? Yes. Okay. The reason is because um, in, your, in your conversation, you talked about scalar waves. You talked about um, healing bones. Mm -hmm. You talked about cancer. You talked about DNA repair. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's no secret. I have a YouTube channel. I've had a couple interviews. The using scalar waves to grow monatomic gold. Monatomic gold hides in calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate, our bones are calcium, right? So what you're probably doing is concentrating that area with a scalar wave, pushing out, just for the opinion side of this, the electromagnetism that's causing the problem and letting the bone regenerate naturally. So a lot of the things that you've said okay. are very point on. How you say them and how you dialogue them may be different from medical, scientific, or just lane man conversations, but very um, I have a whole list of uh, videos online that show scalar waves, show what they do, show what we do with them. And I would just like to say that point on. Your presentation, uh, how you presented it is one thing, but your information, your findings are really showing um, that the scalar wave energy has the ability to repair our DNA, it has the ability to grow, mm -hmm. and it has the ability to um, replicate and put us back to the way we should have been. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe you're right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there you go. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk, uh, Dr. Rafa Briaco. My question was this. In regards to the macular degeneration, did it work equally as well with dry macular degeneration as wet macular degeneration? Yes, there is one group that it did not work very well in. Um, we have some people who have inadvertently been exposed to laser, I mean the true laser, the electromagnetic laser, and suffered retinal damage. And it wasn't very good.